Hi everyone, today's tutorial is about simple person AI. So for this one, a person can simply running after each other. We can also adjust the speed like faster when the person is further and slower when they are near by each other. We can also add minimum distances between characters. And as a bonus, we will also make this person punch after it has caught up. Okay, let's take a look how we are going to do this. Okay, let's get started. So initially, I have this personodon that can move around like with up, down, left, right, stick on and then B for jumping. And I can also rotate the camera like this and B for jump. And the main character color is red. But I am going to add another person that can follow this guy. So yeah, I'm going to copy this. Let's change the color to be green. And in the settings, for the frame of reference for motion, remember to change this one to the world. Because we will keep rotating the camera, if we does not change this, the person may move in incorrect direction later. And then I'm going to close it. Now that our main character can move around, right? But this guy still cannot move. This guy needs a little help from us. It has to know what is the location of the main character so that it can follow. So we are going to add a location sensor and connect to the main character. And because in the future we may need another person nodon to follow this person around or like this person nodon can also be very far away so i'm going to add wormhole exit x and z for x and z location of the main player and then wormhole exit and then Wormhole Entrance Z. So now the location of the person will send through this Wormhole Entrance X and Z accordingly. Okay, let's look at this person now done. Now that we know the location of the first player, to find the direction, right, we need to compute the difference between locations of both characters. So yeah, we need another location sensor. And we need to control the forward, backward, and also left, right. For the forward, backward, we need the difference between Z axis. So yeah, we need the wormhole exit Z. And then minus for difference. And so now we have difference between Z values and we can connect this one to the forward backward. Okay, let's try. See, both move the same direction on forward backward. We are going to do the same on the left right. So here we need wormhole exit X. I'm going to change this into X. And then compute the difference. So yeah, we need to find the difference between the X value of the main player and the follower. Then the difference will be controlling left, right. Okay, let's test. Yeah, so now the green is dashing towards the red aggressively. But it's too fast, right? And it's like both characters are kissing. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> so what we are going to do next is we are going to make this character go slower. To do that, I'm going to add the map. For example, on the forward-backward direction, I'm going to add a map. Basically, this map will help slow down the speed when the person is closer to the target. I'm going to the settings, and then for the input range. Um, let's say that I want the person to be at full speed, 
when the distance on this axis is more than 5. So I'm going to set this to be from negative 5 to 5. And the output range, let's say that when the difference is 5, I wanted the character to go on full sprint. So yeah, the output range should be from negative 2 to 2. You can try changing these values around. Close it. And then instead of linking this to the person's input directly, I'm going to change it. Like, the output of negative value should go in the map. And the map should go into the person node on. I'm going to do the same on the x-axis as well. Copy the map. And then link negative to map. And map to left right. Yeah, so now the green character is slower when it is about to reach the red. Yes, that's what we want. For fun, let's make this person jump at the same time. So I'm going to add button press B to this. What will happen is that both characters will jump at the same time. Yay! Okay, let's say that now both of these characters are too close. Right? Mm, I want to set the minimum distance between them. So the idea is that I want to set the input to be 0 when the distance is less than, let's say, 0 0.5 meter. Okay, so let's do that. So we can get the distance between this character and the main character by computing square root of some square of this difference. So here I'm showing how I compute distance between the main character, which is red, and the following character, which is green. So I know the length of both sides, which are x2 minus x1 and z2 minus z1. To find the diagonal length, I can find it by finding square root of the sum square of both sides of the triangle. So I'm going to use times to get the square. So the first one is for getting the square of z difference. And the second multiplication is for getting the square of x difference. Next we need a distance right. So yeah, we need a square root. And it is a square root of some square. So yeah, we can link the output of the square to the square root directly. So let me explain the math. Here is the difference on z axis. And here is the difference on x axis. Here we will get the square of z. And this is the square of x. And this is the square root of x square plus z square, which is the distance. So we wanted to stop the person from moving when this value is less than 0 0.5. That means we need this input when the value is greater than or equal to 0.5. So I'm going to add greater than or equal to 0.5 condition. Change this to greater than or equal to. And then I'm going to add 0 0.5. And when this is true, we want to use this map value. We can achieve that by add time. Okay. So when this output is true, we want to use this map value. But when this output is false, it is zero, right? Zero times whatever is zero, and the person will stop moving. We are going to do the same on left, right as well. So the time, the condition input, and the map output. Then we link this to the person input. 
Yep. So now, yeah, the person will stop like 0.5 meter. This is not so obvious. Let me change this to 1. Yeah, so now, like, both characters have stopped kissing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and they are maintaining some social distancing. Good, good. Yeah, you can see the white line box, right? Those are from the location sensor. You can go to the settings and then remove visible properties. And the last fun thing that we are going to do is that we want this person to attack when it is within the attack range, which is 1 meter. So, yeah, we can go to the person settings and then change action to punch and yeah when this condition is false which means we are in the attack range we should punch the person yes so we can connect this not output into the person's action okay let's try Okay, so now this queen is running towards aggressively. It also jumps at the same time. Once the queen catch up, it will punch. Yes. And yeah, this can be useful for like a simple enemy AI. It can also do other things like shooting or kicking. Yeah. And yeah, that's it for today's tutorial. Hope you enjoy it. Lastly, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you need any tutorials, leave me a comment below. Bye-bye, and see you next time.